Hey guys, what's up? Sal here, and today I'm just going to make a short video kind of talking about some of the things I've noticed, differences, and whatnot on getting one of these guys. This is a Xbox One S controller specifically, and I'm controlling the focus because my stupid camera's not good at it, so we'll just do that. There we go. So now you can see one controller right there. It is a nice controller. Um, I typically don't like things in white color schemes, but I think that looks, and if you think this looks bright on camera, it's, well, it's not this bright, but it's a pretty brilliant looking white. And uh, I've actually banged it a couple times and stuff. So it's not like the old video game controllers back in the day where it was just like a coat on like gray plastic. It seems to be actually like the plastic itself is that color. So that's pretty nice. So my go-to controller has been for a while now this. I actually have two of these. This is the uh, Steam controller. Now I wanted to get an Xbox controller for a couple of reasons. Now I will be honest, I use this most of the time and for most things. One of the things that baffles people when they see me doing it is using it for 2D games like platformers like Shovel Knight and stuff and using the pad as a, <laughs> the uh, pad here as a D-pad. And especially when in, uh, I tell them I don't even press down, like this has like a click to it. And um, yeah, I just have it set up so I just touch it in whatever direction and it goes. Something you get used to over time. Now I will say after using this for about two weeks now, it's a good jack of, well, I can't say it's a jack of all trades. This would be more of a jack of all trades. But the reason I ended up getting this is because this, as cool as this guy is, and he's a jack and he can technically do everything um because this is highly customizable this is more customizable than the elite controller is the, i think the elite controller is a joke for the money i'm sorry um but this thing here is you can play anything on it if you set it take the time and set it up right and you can configure it in any kind of way you want sensitivity stuff like that however this cannot these pads cannot do analog stick emulation it just it's terrible so there's games like batman where he uses like his special tool to hack stuff and all that um there's a couple of 2d games axiom verge is a game where for some reason i can't get this controller dialed in the way i want even if i like add a lot of dead zone to it so i was just like screw it and the other thing is too is like if somebody comes over and you hand them one of these and they've never used it, they're going to look at you like you're insane. So I just wanted to have like a normal controller on hand. So if somebody wants to come over and play some games or something, I can hand them, hand them this. They know what this is. They're familiar with it. And then for me, I have like a nice actual D-pad for like emula games emulation and stuff like that. The other thing is fighting games, not going to happen on this guy. This, you can't do a quick enough reaction off of a touchpad for like moves and stuff. That you can't on an actual physical d-pad so that was the other reason i wanted one of these now um having said that let's get into the problem of connectivity um i was expecting this to be easier to connect to a pc um since x input is like built into windows it, it's not it's actually worse than a steam controller i was kind of surprised by that um so if you're just taking a cable and this is the cable i got with the steam controller and you're plugging it into the top here and then you plug the other end into the PC, that's fine. It works perfectly fine, okay? The uh, problem is, is when you start getting into one of the reasons I ended up getting this. So, uh, right off the bat, I should mention one of the differences here, I'm gonna zoom in again on this, is the face color. So, Generation 3 Xbox One S controllers, you can tell because this, whole entire faceplate color is the same around the xbox logo if you have an older generation the color of the triggers up on the top here is going to go down in this like little area you can see down here and around the 360 controller and not be the color of the faceplate so if you have one of these and you're looking for one of these you want the one that has the uh color of the faceplate around the entire xbox logo because that's going to be the one that's going to have bluetooth built in now the actual connecting of bluetooth the process there is not hard at all it's you hold down the xbox button to turn it on and then there's a connect button up on the top here that you press and it's going to blink and it's going to throw it in a search mode for bluetooth bluetooth and you just have to pair it 
that worked fine. What I didn't realize is I thought I was already on the Xbox One anniversary or Xbox One Windows 10 anniversary update. I wasn't. I had to update. I had issues. And once I did that, it was perfectly fine. Once I did that, though, um, one of the things I had to do is update this. And update the controller, you have to download something called the... You know what? Let me look it up real quick here. It's the Xbox, um, Xbox Accessories app. And you have to download that off the Windows Store. You have to connect this to the USB, which, by the way, they do not give you a cable with it for your $60 if you bought this full price. I, like I said, I got it for $40, and that's what it feels like it's worth to me. I will say the build quality is good. Build quality is really good, but still not like $60 good. Um, you have to connect it, and then that's where you go to update it. And you have to be on the anniversary update to be able to update it. So there's like more loops to jump through. Once you do all that, this works fine. Now, having connected it, I noticed games like Forza that use the vib trigger vibration, which is a cool trick because you can tell like um, what your brakes are doing and if you have wheel spin, which is more information you won't have if you're just doing rumble, basic rumble off of this. For me, I have to use a USB cable to plug it in or get the $25 wireless adapter for the Xbox standard stuff. It does not work through through Bluetooth. Um, the vibration on everything else works fine through Bluetooth. Uh, now, going on to the Steam Link. To connect this through Bluetooth on the Steam Link, if I have it connected through the USB, works fine. Vibration works fine. Tried it in Rocket League, tried it in Batman, and a couple other stuff. Uh, if you use Bluetooth on this on the Steam Link, First of all, I had connectivity issues after I did the update on this. When I first got it and I didn't update it right away, I connected it to Steam Link. It was fine. I had to go to the beta software to get this to work. So um, once going to the beta software, getting it connected, Bluetooth does not work through Bluetooth, or the uh, vibration does not work through Bluetooth on this. So that is an issue. Um, <laughs> so it was like to where on this guy, he does, this guy does now support vibration. It's the haptic vibration. And I prefer it in some ways because like in Pinball Arcade, it actually feels more authentic with the way you would expect it to feel through a pinball machine than it does with a weight spinning around. But um, vibration works across the board on this guy, wireless, wired, whatever. Uh, hooking it up to different devices is not an issue. Keeping it connected to two different devices is not an issue. Anytime I want to use this on the Steam Link, I have to disconnect it on the Bluetooth on the PC because if I leave one connected and try to connect it to another then I'm going to have like issues and all this. So it was like a major pain in the ass just switching this over one device to the other. Once you have two, two, I have like the PC and the Steam Link connected on this thing. All I have to do is like once I paired it to both devices, if I want to switch to one or the other, I hold down the A button and I hit this. Now um, the actual button feedback on this device. I would say overall compared to the Steam controller, it's better. The trigger travel is way better. The triggers on the Steam Link, or Steam Link, the Steam controller, I full misspeaks today, is very short before you have that click. If you guys can hear that, there's a click at the bottom similar to like a GameCube controller. And for some reason, Valve's in, in their infinite wisdom made the actual analog readable part of the entire trigger even past that digital click which makes no sense to me whatsoever. I don't know why you would do that because they get the full 65,000 range on this. You have to click down all the way. And if you're doing that and it's trying to do another command, but you need like the thing I thought would have been cool with this is like racing games. You hold the trigger down for your gas and you hit the click for like nitrous, except you're noticing your car's not moving as fast as it is because you don't have the gas held down all the way because the rest of the travel is in the click. So that was another thing I liked about this is just, for like racing games having like a normal trigger and whatnot they can be cool especially if you're assigning it like to two digital values and you're just using the analog for like another digital value but um for racing games and stuff i think i kind of prefer this one like the triggers feel a little bit better and whatnot uh, another nice thing is the travel on the bumpers has uh, been improved over this uh, previous xbox controller and the d-pad's been slightly improved a little bit so that's pretty nice um I don't think the D-pad on this is bad, but you're not going to play fighting games on this. So that's just that's one thing to keep in mind. 
Now I will say the analog sticks are a little bit of a concern to me. They, the hats on the analog sticks are smaller. They feel tiny under my thumbs. The actual travel point or the stick on the top, like the stem, is higher up. So it feels a little bit weird compared to a Steam controller because it feels like there's a little bit more travel and stuff on there. And the other thing I notice is there's a bigger dead zone on the Xbox One controller compared to the one analog stick on this. I think the surface on the Steam controller feels nicer. The hat's a lot bigger. My entire thumb feels like, you know, instead of it's like on an edge somewhere, it's like encompassed by it. I think the rubber material on the Steam controller is better for like grip, even though it's like a rounded stick compared to like a, I guess you would call it like an any. <laughs> so like the Steam controller has got an Audi and this has an any. But um, overall, it's just, for me, it was nice to have something around the house that everybody can use. The only other thing I can say here is they did add a 3.5 millimeter jack recently in this. And so you just plug your headphones in, you don't have to use their proprietary crap or whatnot. It works, but you have to have the wireless dongle for the PC, otherwise it doesn't work at all. And in my situation, it's not a big deal, so I just, uh, I just would use Bluetooth anyways. I can't tell any difference in lag or anything between the Bluetooth and the regular wireless standard. And yes, I did try it out. I borrowed a friend's PC dongle, wireless dongle thing, so. But, yeah. So far, pretty good thoughts on this. Um, the grip's way better. It's got a nice, like, um, bottom on it. Here, let's see if I can show you guys. And just crank that sucker up, and we'll see what we can do. All right. It's pretty much in macro mode right now, and everything is backwards. All right. But you can see there's, like, those little dimples there. And it's just part of the, uh, part of the plastic mold. So it feels like it's uh, really grippy compared to the old Xbox One controller. So pretty positive, guys. I like it. Uh, somebody told me this is new, this little dip or whatever you want to call it in the back. So like if they want to like make stuff that plugs in, it grips onto that or something. But um, yeah, pretty good. Range has been pretty good. I haven't had it drop out on me or anything like that. Just been the connectivity of it's been kind of a pain and whatnot. But everything else is pretty solid. And obviously no vibration through Bluetooth on the Steam Link, which sucks. But, yeah, guys, if you have any other thoughts or anything like that, uh, leave a comment down below. If I missed anything, you've been using one of these for a while and I missed something, let me know. And I will see you in the next video.